What? What is it good for? It's good for controlling people, it's good for generating revenue. That's why when Putin proposes a peace deal that's pretty much in alignment with what Russian leaders have always said since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War, it's granted as some extraordinary slur and an attack on the sacred Zelensky, that modern Saint Zelensky. Oh, Zelensky, why don't you light up the Golden Globes with another plea for another few billions? Oh, Zelensky, why aren't you presented as a hero for cancelling elections, for playing the piano with erections? For condemning Jan 6th insurrections. Oh, sweet Zelensky. How can I love thee more? Now, he might be all right. I don't know why I got into that so much. He's a comedian that ended up leading a country. And Lord alone knows that's a path that many comedians have contemplated from time to time. But imagine the assassination attempts. Who wants to put up with that bullshit? What I would say is this. What the hell's going on between Ukraine and Russia? It's certainly a lot more complicated than what you'll read in the legacy media. We know that in 2014, the CIA intervened to bring about an insurrection and to bring down a democratically elected government. When Putin says, all we want is Ukraine not to join NATO and for Ukrainian troops to withdraw out of the territories that have currently been conquered by Russian forces, we might consider whether or not that is a better deal than continuing to fund this war. Because you know what Julian Assange said about Afghanistan? They don't want quick wars. They want expensive wars. The function of war and the function of government is one function. To wash money out of the tax bases of the United States, out of the tax bases of European countries, and back into the hands of a transnational security elite. And that's what happened in Afghanistan. Two trillion dollars of your money, it's American money, trans into. I wonder where that ended up. Do you, do you imagine that it, who do you think got it? Was it a troop somewhere? Is that why 22 former service people a day commit suicide? Was it a member of the American military? Is that why many of them that are still in active service? So let me know where you think these trillions of dollars are ending up and I'll give you a couple of clues. Raytheon, Lockheed Martin and Boeing. They are certainly better at controlling your government than they are installing doors on aeroplanes if recent events are anything to go by. So let's have a look at Putin's peace deal and the reason that it might be rejected. This becomes all the more relevant and interesting because if indeed they do have a 10-year plan and at the G7 they've just agreed 10 years of funding using your money and my money to continue to fund a war that's costing Ukrainian lives and I pray, I pray for the end of the deaths of Ukrainian people. I pray for the end of the destruction of Ukrainian territory. I pray for peace Oh Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. This is not anti-Ukrainian. This is not pro-Putin. This is pro-you, me, and humanity. As your man Donald Trump said, controversially, I just want people to stop dying. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. And I remember a time when that didn't used to be a controversial opinion to hold. Let's have a look at the fact that the House of Representatives has passed a measure automatically registering men aged 18 to 26 for selective service. So the House of Representatives passed a measure on Friday automatically registering men aged 18 to 26 for selective service. It was part of the annual National Defense Authorization Act, which sets out the US government's military and national security priorities for the next fiscal year. This year's NDAA authorizes $895.2 billion in military spending and a $9 billion increase from 24. While it hasn't been invoked in over half a century, it's mandatory for all male US citizens to register for the selective service, also known for the military draft when they turn 18. Failure to register is classified as a felony and comes with a host of legal charges. Do you think that that's just a coincidence or do you think that's important? Now, we're seeing this on Fox News. It's legacy media. It's right wing. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat if you think that's significant. Before we get into the rest of this story and how significant it is that a bill has just been passed that automatically registers fighting age men to fight in wars. And whenever I hear in right wing spaces, people saying, do you notice that fighting age males are being criminalized and demoralized and attacked and diminished and diminutized in a thousand ways and decimated? and destroyed and annihilated. I think this has got to be a conspiracy. But hmm, hmm, is it a conspiracy though? Is it though? Let's have a look at how the legacy media handled 
Putin's offer of a ceasefire. With the fighting in eastern Ukraine largely remaining a stalemate, Vladimir Putin is trying a new round of diplomacy. The Russian president floating a new peace proposal on Friday, calling for an immediate halt to the Russian offensive in exchange for the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from areas already controlled by Moscow and an end to Ukraine's NATO membership process. Russia is offering an option that will make it possible to really end the war in Ukraine. In a way, you might not want to cede the idea that Vladimir Putin is dictating the terms. But for a moment, and I'm really interested in what you guys think about this, do you believe that Russia, with its history, with its military, with its nuclear capacity, is a kind of, you know, what Donald Trump might call a country, or some adversarial nation that might be dismissed or brushed aside, some Afghanistan, some Iraq or Iran, some Vietnam, some place, some plaything nation on the chessboard of reality? Or do you think that Russia are also a player on the global stage and that you have to negotiate differently with them? Do you back the project that appears to be behind this? A globalist project, a unipower, one world state where both Russia and China are destabilized militarily because economically and financially, American power is waning. That what we still think of as the United States of America is essentially a veil for globalist corporate interests. Your black rocks, your military industrial complex, your big pharma, and all of this will disappear down the tunnel of time while you will own nothing and be happy. Perhaps on the side of various apocalypses that lay waste to a significant portion of the population and significantly control those that survive. I was about to say the rest of us, like I know for sure that I'm going to like totally live through Armageddon. But I have been saved, baby. Now, before we get into that, I would like to send a message of love to our sponsors at Charlie's. Charlie's make this incredible product. Now, have you noticed that I'm looking incredibly young? It's not just the tiny hat, it's my skin. And my skin is looking good because of this range of extraordinary products. Now, I don't know if these products are gonna be for you, but they might be for someone you love and they make a perfect gift. And there's 20% off this pack for the next, I think we can do it for 48 hours. Is it 48 hours? Can we do it for 48 hours? If you use the code brand. Now there's a number of significant details about these extraordinary products. First, they're absolutely toxin free. Unlike a lot of cosmetics, you know, like you use things to make you look younger. It sinks poison, venom into your face, like some sort of oily little cobra, like some sort of Justin Trudeau moisturizer. Looks good actually toxic. One of the components of this product that makes it extraordinary is Citrus Paradisi Peel Oil. This is a beautiful organic ingredient and the very kind of thing that you'd expect from Charlene, the founder of this company, who is on Joe Biden's hate list because of the stance she took during COVID. Remember, you can use our code to get a discount on these products. These products can do all manner of things, elevate your skincare routine using the unmatched power of nature. Toxin free, baby. So say yes to natural goodness and show your skin its true potential. Potential. I will say they tend to look better if you use them in conjunction with a tiny, tiny little mouse's hat. So take a stand, demand transparency, let beauty shine from the inside out. Visit charlize.beauty forward slash brand and use the code brand for 20% off. Discover a new era of personal care, one that's truly toxic free. Stay radiant, stay conscious, stay beautiful. There will be someone in your life that will love you for this glorious little concoction. I'm calling it a basket of wonder. There's a shower gel in there. There's a restoring anti-aging serum. There's all sorts of stuff in there. I'm recommending it. I'm endorsing it to you. And Charlene, the founder of the company, she's a good, strong, damn fine American woman. We're urging to turn this tragic page of history and to begin restoring step-by-step -step relations of trust. <laughs> But the Ukrainians call that a non-starter. And even with fighting intensifying along the Eastern Front, they say they're in a good position to stage a counteroffensive in the summer. I've heard all this good position to stage a counteroffensive in the summer stuff before. Where was that? Last summer! They're always telling us there's going to be this counteroffensive. Aren't they? That's a war lyric as old as time. In the First World War, it was always, we'll be owned by Christmas. We'll be owned by Christmas, you know. And then in the Second World War, oh, that Hitler, do you know he's only got one... What difference is that going to make if he's developing UFO Nazi spaceships? I don't know. It's just going to make it harder to kick him in the...
І нарешті він пропонує країнам. It was not a serious attempt to agree on peace and had no relevance to any negotiations. There is no possibility to find compromise. The new diplomatic push by Russia comes as NATO defense ministers meet in Brussels. And the United States stands behind NATO's continued support. And our allies and partners will stand by Ukraine for the long haul. Stand behind Ukraine, stand behind the concept of Ukraine, use Ukraine as a vassal to generate control, to create a bulwark state on the edge of Russia, to generate opportunity for Black Rock, to create opportunity for conscription and control, to maybe usher us towards nuclear war in order to institute more control. Hey, I pray I'm wrong. I pray this is a conspiracy theory. But so many of those conspiracy theories have turned out to be conspiracy facts. And indeed, if this is a conflict between Ukraine and Russia, and Ukraine are not yet a member of NATO, and if one of Putin's conditions is don't let Ukraine join NATO on the basis of the agreement that was made between Gorbachev and Reagan of not letting NATO territories impede on former Soviet borders by even one inch since which time that agreement has been transgressed by I think a thousand miles and many many countries have been invited to join NATO and that amounts to impinging upon former Soviet territory. That amounts to acts of aggression towards Russia that preceded his invasion of Ukraine and yet of course we continually hear that Putin is the aggressor and as I have to say every time we bring this stuff up I don't like Vladimir Putin either. I don't want that dude in charge of the world. But it's odd when you start to imagine that Vladimir Putin's interests might be more closely aligned with yours than Joe Biden's. Because Vladimir Putin don't want your taxes to fund the military industrial complex. I don't know. Let me know how you think about it in the chat, guys. And indeed, if this is a conflict between Ukraine and Russia rather than NATO and Russia, how come the person that responds to the peace deal, first of all, most publicly and most vocally is Jens Stoltenberg, who's the head of not Ukraine, but NATO. There's an amazing moment that you should see when India declared its independence from Britain. The new prime minister, president or prime minister Nehru, the first leader of the free India, gave his speech to the people of India. We're free now of British tyranny. We're free now of British control. The only thing is, he gave that speech in English. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. So who was he talking to really? You've got to get more astute when you're watching politics. You've got to see whose power plays are playing out in your reality. We've got to learn to see from history how these things roll out. Let's have a look at Jens Stoltenberg, president of Ukraine. Oh no, he's leader of NATO. Well, that's weird. It's not for Ukraine uh, to withdraw forces from Ukrainian territory. It's for Russia to withdraw their forces from occupied Ukrainian land. So, 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 so this is not a peace proposal. This is a proposal of a more uh, aggression, uh, more uh, occupation, um, and um, and it demonstrates in a way that that uh, that Russia's aim is to control Ukraine. Uh, and uh, look, his body language. He's got his arms folded. He's got his arms folded, folded across the heart chakra. <laughs> He's got his arms folded across the heart chakra because he's telling a lie. And that has been the purpose uh, of Russia since the beginning of this war. Uh, and uh, and that's a blatant violation of international law. And uh, and that's also the reason why NATO allies continue to support Ukraine. Yeah, so it's a violation of international law. And there have been no NATO countries involved in violation of international law. I don't know what happened in Iraq. Probably there was weapons of mass destruction. So there. So why don't you shut up? The New York Times have taken a mere two years to observe that there was a peace deal between Zelensky and Putin. Then Boris Johnson, living cream cake, former prime minister of Britain, went there and scuppered it all up. And do you imagine for a single second that Rishi Sunak would have done anything different? Or do you imagine for a single second that Keir Starmer, next prime minister of Britain, would do anything different? Of course not. They are all globalists. They are all ultimately controlled by the same forces, supping from the same resources and by that I mean the teeth of Satan. Let's have a look at the New York Times. This is Glenn Decent on X. There they are, the New York Times saying there was a peace deal in 2022 but it was scuppered by Western leaders. Keep up New York Times, keep up. We ain't got all bleeding day. We ain't got all day darling. Here's fellow rumbler 
Glenn Greenwald on the subject. The evidence that Biden and NATO, and especially Boris Johnson, that great giant chick, you know, like a little fluffy baby hen, impeded the peace deal, is now overwhelming and conclusive. They wanted a prolonged war. The proof includes multiple statements from various world leaders attempting to mediate an agreement. That peace deal was a surprise for your birthday, and you've ruined it. You're just like Putin. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very own 1775 coffee. This is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had. Seriously good, ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try Rumble's 1775 Revolutionary Coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favourite? It's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? You're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now. Pick up your first bag. Use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? Okay, back to the content. Let's have a uh, look at what David Sachs is saying. In January 2022, there was a last dish effort at diplomacy to prevent the Ukraine war between Secretary of State Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov. At that meeting, Blinken not only declared that NATO's door would remain open to Ukraine, he reversed a previous concession by stating that the US reserved the right to place nuclear weapons on Ukrainian soil. This was a massive provocation. In fact, it was the same provocation that the Soviet Union committed against the US, which led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. When will congressional Republicans subpoena Blinken and get to the bottom of the diplomatic incompetence that led to the Ukraine war? I don't know that they ever will. Is that what politics is now? I will subpoena you. I will subpoena you so hard, you won't sit down for a week. No, you subpoena me, I'll subpoena you. Can I have a look at your subpoenas? Show me those subpoenas! Get your hands off my subpoenas! Get your hand off my penis! I did not give you consent to look up my subpoenas, baby! Well, there you go. These are your leaders. This is your politics. This is your Armageddon. This is your war. This is our opportunity to rise up in unison against these disgusting Luciferian forces that seem to be asserting control on our planet. Now, although a lot of you condemn dear Bobby Kennedy, my man, for his position in particular on Israel. But I pray for peace everywhere. An end to violence, an end to war. Here's Bobby Kennedy pretty much summing up the entire damn thing. And let me know what you think. Do you feel like outsiders? And I know that's how you see Donald Trump. And that's why you love Donald Trump, because you think he's a wrecking ball in these uh, democratic institutions. Do you think that it's the likes of Bobby Kennedy and the likes of Donald Trump that are required? Where are the hero's going to rise from. It's got to be from within, isn't it? It's got to be all of us, isn't it? It's not going to be some external hero, is there? It's going to be us. We've got to participate. We've got to do what we can, can't we? Contribute together. Let's have a look at this from Bobby, 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 Bobby Kennedy. You know, Putin every day says, I want to settle the war. Let's negotiate. And Zelensky has said, we're not going to negotiate. But 92, the, the wall came down in the Soviet Union. Gorbachev said, I'm going to allow you to reunify Germany, but I want your commitment. After that, you will not move NATO one inch to the east. And we solemnly swore we wouldn't do it. Well, then in 97, we're going to move NATO a thousand miles to the east and take 15 countries into it and surround the Soviet Union. We then overthrow the government in 2014, their elected government, and put in a Western sympathetic government. Russia then has to go into Crimea because they have a port 
That's a lot of hard seconds. They're only warm water port. I like that stuff, like warm water port stuff. That's why I like learning. Do you know what I mean? Like when they say like that's a strategic and necessary thing that you can't take Crimea or access to Crimea away from Russia. It's strategically too important. I like Bobby, but I love Trump, says Deanne Ross. Well, then get ready, baby, because here is your chosen one on the same subject. Talking about Zelensky as a salesperson and talking about obviously how he would be able to bring about peace. I think Zelensky is maybe the greatest salesman of any politician that's ever lived. Every time he comes to our country, he walks away with $60 billion. And I like him, you know, on the impeachment hoax number one, he was very good. He said, no, the president didn't threaten me at all. He could have been a grandstander and said, I was threatened, right, Matt? He could have said, I was threatened. So I like him. But he's the greatest salesman of all time. He walks in. So now here's the beauty. He just left four days ago with 60 billion. And he gets home and he announces that he needs another 60 billion. Else it never ends. It never ends. I will have that settled prior to taking the White House as president elect. I will have that settled. Got to stop it. Would it never happen? Remember, we started this. I am talking about the renewed bill. That means that mandatory for all male U.S. citizens to register for selective service known as the military draft when they turn to 18. Failure to register is classified as a felony and comes with a host of legal challenges. Supporters of the amendment argue it would cut down on bureaucratic red tape and help U.S. citizens to avoid unnecessary legal issues as well as cutting down on the taxpayer dollars going towards prosecuting those cases. It was led by Chrissy Hulaha and passed in the House Armed Service Committee's version of the NDAA in May. The NDAA advanced through the committee by an overwhelming 57 to 1. By using available federal databases, the agency will be able to register all the individuals required and thus help ensure that any future military draft is fair and equitable, said Houlihan during a debate. This will allow us to rededicate resources. Basically, that means money towards reading readiness, towards mobilization rather than towards education and advertising campaigns. Sounds a little bit like they're at least considering the potential necessity for more troops, more war, more opportunity for control and profit. And remember, what I believe is this. They often claim that their actions are based on on compassion. We have to lock you in your homes. You simply must take this medication. Why? Because life is sacred. Every human life is sacred and we must protect the vulnerable. These are important and beautiful principles. I don't believe they operate from that place. I don't believe they believe that. Do you believe that? I feel that what they do is they say we have to intervene in this geopolitical crisis between Russia and Ukraine in order to protect Ukrainian people. When in fact, there's another agenda, agendas of dominion, agendas of resource, agendas of finance, agendas ultimately of control, control of a domestic population and ultimately perhaps control of a global population. But they can't come out and just tell us that out front, can they? They have to always be saying we're protecting you or we are working in support of some higher principle that no one but a fool would refute. How dare you to impugn us? We're basically Christian soldiers on the march across the world. Well, I simply don't trust them. I don't believe them. There's no reason to trust or believe them. And I feel that there was a peace deal on the table. Putin is saying he will withdraw. Why don't we accept that peace deal and work out the details from there? Work out democracy, if that's so important for the world and for Ukraine. Remember, that's the whole reason we're in this conflict is in order to support democracy, even though there are no elections in Ukraine, even though there's only one political party in Ukraine, even though American journalists like Gonzalo Lira are dying in prison in Ukraine, even though BlackRock have already done a deal to rebuild Ukraine. We have to believe that when they say democracy, they mean the right of the citizenry to control their nation rather than a set of institutions that control the citizenry. The Tocqueville, what did he tell you? That there will be greater tyranny under democracy because we won't notice the tyranny because we're so beleaguered and baffled, wandering through malls, tired of it all, consuming sugar, lost and bewildered, shepherded, not by a good shepherd, but by the Luciferian forces of consumerism and commodification. But that is just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe and turn on the notifications because let me tell you, the algorithm ain't gonna get you.
They will deny you access to these free-flowing, streaming rants of sweet lady freedom and liberty herself. And come join us on our home in Rumble and subscribe on Rumble and get into that conversation because it's absolutely fantastic. And if you want more of this content, become an awakened wonder. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.